It's not everybody about that life. You know what I'm saying? Being gangster, selling bricks, robbing people, hitting licks, kidnapping, extortion, whatever you into, that don't make you the most authentic person in the world. Mm. Rich is gangster. Taking care of your children, picking them up from school, dropping my daughter off at the hair salon, nail salon, letting her girlfriends come over on the weekends and sit up, they can order all the movies they want, eat ice cream, go to Roof Chris, ice skating. That's gangster. Yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Mr. J. Hill, and welcome to another episode of the J. Hill Podcast. But right now, I want to give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor, that's Top Dog Law. So look, man, if you suffer from medical malpractice, a slip and fall, especially a car accident, make sure you call my guy Top Dog Law. That's Top Dog Law on Instagram and topdoglaw.com. Look, if you check out his Instagram, you'll see he uploading big checks. I mean, like every day. I ain't talking about the little ones. The big ones. So shout out to my guy, Top Dog Law, topdoglaw.com. Get that money. I know I'm trying to get it. Yo, what's poppin', man? Mr. J Hill, J Hill Podcast. And it's, listen, it's special when I go home. This is extra special. Yeah. This crazy. <laughs> listen, man, y'all see me working. Yeah. Stop fucking playing with me, man. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah. This is special. Like one of the biggest artists coming out of our, our, our neck of the woods, the DMV, right? You know, went from Baltimore. We don't even claim DMV, but I'm going to say it today. Yeah. One of the biggest artists ever. I mean, legendary status. <laughs> Nigga, stop playing. Absolutely. Wake up, motherfucker. It's the, come First on. Mutt, you come me? on, man. Fat <laughs> trailing this motherfucker. What up, dog? What do, baby? You all right? Man, I'm blessed, man. Love Listen, man. Love. Look at this shit, man. Love How you love. feeling? I feel wonderful, man. I'm home. Um, I'm working. I'm back on the road. God is good, man, like you said, bro. Let me ask you this, man. Do you do you understand who you are? Yeah, I do. You feel it? Yeah, I feel it. Um I took I I, I took my situation lightly. Um back when I was younger, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't really uh fully appreciating um all the blessings that God was giving me. I felt like I deserved them when I didn't, you know what I'm saying? But now I'm at a point where is I'm, I'm comfortable and I love it and I'm I'm trying to be the best that I could be. You look good, man. Yeah, my nigga, appreciate it, man. <laughs> what you they know? say in DC? You look <laughs> sweet. <laughs> you look sweet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Fresh all the fair, y'all. You Yo, know what's up? How, how, are you? Do you feel like? I want you to be honest with me. Do you feel like everybody else knew who the fuck you was? Um, nah, it's always some doubters. You know what I'm saying? There's always gonna be some doubters, and um, you know, I I could be honest enough to say that I gave. Uh, people some reasons to doubt, you know, with my legal troubles and just um running the streets, man, and putting the streets and putting my hood uh first before business. So, but it's a lot of people who do know who I am, who respect me and respect my craft and respect my work, ethic, my career, my catalog. But you know, it's always uh more fans to gain and, and more people, more doubters to prove wrong. It's so much shit to talk about, but I wouldn't be me if I if I didn't get into the bag that I always get in. We talk about the streets and shit, right? right. It's almost like we ain't never get a fair shot, bro. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, because we thought coming up, like putting on for the hood. Yeah. And my hood was like a thing, but it really was setting us back. Right. Yeah. But um, it, it, it came, it always came out of place of love because, you know, we want people to know where we're from. You know what I'm saying? And, um, America, where well, the world, the earth, period, you know, the world is a big place. And when you come from a place like, you know, Baltimore or Northeast D.C., you want the world to know. And um, sometimes it do hold us back, but it's all in good faith. Like, we, we, we just trying to show love to, to what made us. Let me ask you this thing. I asked a few people this. What are some of the misconceptions, the biggest misconception, what's the biggest misconception that you came out the hood that you learned that wasn't true or that wasn't real, that you thought was real? Um, that the streets love you, mm. you know, I used to think that, um, the streets love you, man, but the, but the streets ain't playing fair at all. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, 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 it's killer rats out here. It's a nigga who willing to put that gun on you or put the prosecutor on you. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And, um, nothing is really what it seems, you know what I'm saying? And now after having kids, it's like, I view everything different and I just want my freedom. And it's like. <laughs> <clears throat> niggas always dissing or every time you turn around it's a new hater popping up and he's forcing your hand you know where I'm from he's forcing me to kill him you know what I'm saying and, and, and now I'm at an age where it's like 
you know, if you hate, you do disc records and all that, it's cool, man. I don't want no smoke, man. I'm trying to collect this paper and take care of my children. And not to make excuses for niggas, but we talk about not giving that fair shot. It's, we seen so many success stories of niggas coming up off of diss songs. Yeah. Coming up off of, like, they not really hating because they, they just coming up out the best way. They know how to come up. They know yeah. that if I do a diss song, he going to respond and now I'm lit. Mm -hmm. They don't really know no better. Right, yeah. That Sometimes that's the case, but not all the time. Some niggas, some niggas dissing out of out of other means. You know what I'm saying? Like it's real shit going on, and, and you know some niggas just express their hatred in different ways. Mm. Yeah. Yo, you know what I fuck with? Talk stand on this family thing. You did something really smart, right? And, and on some mm -hmm. mad time, we got in here, right? First thing you did, you call your lady, like, yeah, yo, I'm about to do this interview. Mm -hmm. I gotta put my phone on solid for yeah. a minute. So right. if you call and I don't answer, I'm gonna let you know what's going on. Right, yeah. As a man, when did you learn how to, like, you know, do things differently when you have a woman? Right? Because at first it was like, man, I'm about to, like, I'm not doing an interview. Leave me a, yeah, like, yeah, nah, yeah. I can't work like that. Um, nah, you know, I went through a lot of trials and tribulations. And, um, basically, uh, prison. It, it it opened my eyes up a lot to like the world, women, mm. um, business and everything. But down the wifey, like she did everything right. She sacrificed a lot. Mm. Uh, she changed the way she dressed. She changed who she hang out with. She changed how how much she go out, and um, down to how she talked to me and respect me. Mm. And so, I, I prayed to God and I prayed and I prayed and I said that. Uh, you know, I didn't want no more relationships, you know what I'm saying, after my last relationship with my baby mother. I ain't want no more relationships, but I prayed to God that if you do bring a woman into my life, if she can abide by my relationship laws in order to be with me, then I'm going to do right by her. So what I'm doing is I'm just trying to be the best man I could be. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to be the best for her because I know she the best for me. And it's definitely, but when you when you giving that energy, it get reciprocated, right? Absolutely, absolutely, and, and and she do that for me. You know what I'm saying? Hey, boy, I'm about to go in this meeting. I'm just letting you know, uh, it should be over in 45 an hour if I don't answer. Shoot me a text if it's an emergency. Call twice. That's just how she move, and so it's only right that I I, I do that for her too. We are gonna get into everything, but just on some man time, I feel like a lot of people don't understand that right there, right? Even the man and woman relationship. <laughs> Like you said, she doing it for you. Right. That kind of opened the door for you to do it for her, mm -hmm. right? A lot of times we we arguing at people for the shit that they don't do or the, the the lack of support or love that they don't know how to show us when we just, we ain't not showing it to them for them to be able to do it for us, right? right? Like yeah. her aunt's calling you like, yo, mm -hmm. I'm going into a meeting. So you know, when you go on your interview or your meeting, yo, right. doing the same thing. Oh, that's some stand-up shit. Mm -hmm. Yo, what, um, what would you actually book for? Um, my last, well, my last bit, I was booked for a felon in um, possession of a firearm. And, you know, I was on probation in a couple counties when I caught that charge. So I got, uh, she sentenced me to 30 months for the gun. But I, by the time she sentenced me, I was already in 35 months. So my gun sentence was over. Okay. And that's why you see me, I got released on October the 15th of last year. And um, I had a couple warrants because from the, from the jurisdictions that I was on uh, probation with, all the jurisdictions uh, squashed the warrants and gave me new court dates except the last jurisdiction, which was Arlington, Virginia. Okay. Um, that's a judge, no-nonsense judge. And she was like, you know, I don't care who he is, what he's done. Um, he violated me. I'm not squashing the warrant. He needs to turn himself in and come see me. And when I turned myself in, she gave me um, 18 months and said, look, I don't want you on probation with me no more, but I want my time. So I'm sending you to 18 months. But in the state of Virginia, the 65% law kicked in for nonviolent offenders. So the 18 months turned into 11. Okay. Yeah. But no probation or nothing? No, nah, no. She maxed me out, so I ain't got no more probation with her. But I am on probation in D.C. and um, federal probation in Maryland. Okay. So walk me through that, bro. You're a free man, right? Right. Niggas is showing love. Absolutely. It's lit, right? I'm back. I'm back to work. And then you find out. I gotta go right back in. I gotta go right back in. It was tough, man, and um, you know, it was tough for my family and for my career, you know, because I'm trying to prove the labels in the in the industry that I am ready and I'm mature enough to to sustain a, a successful career. Excuse me, but um, turning myself in was hard, man, and um, we tried everything in our power. Judge wasn't having it, and um, you know, we just, I'm just glad we got it done and we knocked it out. No, facts. Yeah. Yo, how does that? Cause when we opened up, you were saying like, you know. It's kind of hard, I'm for lack of better words, it's kind of hard for niggas to, I don't know, believe 
believe you this big superstar when you keep getting booked. Right. Right? Mm-hmm. When you get booked again, or when you got to turn yourself in, and it's like, man, I'm already trying to get niggas to take me serious. Yeah. Niggas see I'm still going to jail. Are you thinking about these things when you get- Absolutely, because I got one job. You know what I'm saying? I never had a plan B. It mm-hmm. was it was make it a rap or nothing else. You know what right. I'm saying? Just yeah. get out the streets and make it a rap and nothing else. And so I was definitely um, thinking about everything, the labels, uh, uh, media, person, yeah. people who interview you. Like, yo, it's people going to say, you know what, man, forget Trail, man. Like, he can't leave the streets alone. He's always in trouble. That was always on my mind, you know what I'm saying? Because we need that paper. Mm. The, the labels got that paper. Right. We get money, too, but we ain't got that Jewish money in them, in, them, in, them, in, them, in them record buildings, you know what I'm saying? So that was always on my mind, but I just prayed and kept God first. I kept working in my craft, and um, I'm just ready. No, facts. Mm-hmm. What make what makes this time different? I guess. Um, because it's all or nothing. You know what I'm saying? I'm 32 years old. You know, I've been rapping for 12 years now, and now it's like I'm just now brushing shoulders with all the big name artists, and I'm ready to work, and I'm fully focused now. You know, when I was younger, I used to even want to link with rappers just off the jump that I thought they wasn't real. You know what I'm saying? Or if I thought they if if I thought they couldn't relate to me and, and, and what I represent, then I ain't wanna work with them. But that was a big mistake because business is business, first of all. And second of all, everybody ain't gonna be built from the same cloth as you. You know what I'm saying? And <clears throat> during fair time and I'm out the feds and, and I'm I'm seeing the homies walk around with their MP3s and they listening to this artist, this artist, this artist, and this artist. And I and I said to myself, you know what? Business is business. And some people just wanna hear motherfuckers rap or sing. It don't matter if you then got shot 20 times, if you got three or four bodies, um, if you pimping bitches from state to state, none of that matters. Music, people just want to feel good or people just want to go through their pain or people just want to party. And so I put that in my mind like, Trail, you know what? Motherfuckers ain't got to be like you. You know what I'm saying? Just do good business. And that's what I'm on now. That's what make this time different. Yo, niggas need to hear that, especially coming from you because, yo, coming from the cities where we come from, bro. Yeah. It's easy to be like, man, fuck these niggas, cause like we think we want everything to be genuine, and authentic, right? Absolutely. But like, cause we we from like, at least we know if a nigga fuck with us or not, right? You <laughs> yeah, ain't gotta yeah. play in my face, for real. Mm-hmm. But a guy told me, shout out to DJ Flo. I told, I said this a mad times. This nigga, this, this nigga Flo said, so I remember like, I'm like, yo, shout out Flo. Man, yeah, my I'm nigga. like, man, these niggas, these niggas not genuine. I can't fuck with these niggas. Mm-hmm. This nigga said, why are they not genuine? Cause they don't move like you. Cause, cause they don't move like you move. <laughs> yeah. Some niggas is just genuinely fucked up individuals. Absolutely. It just is what it is. Absolutely. So you can't keep going on trying to do business off a nigga that don't move like you move because like you said, it's business. And not everybody, and another thing is not everybody about that life. You know what I'm saying? Being gangster, selling bricks, robbing people, hitting licks, kidnapping, extortion, whatever you into, that don't make you the most authentic person in the world. Mm. Rich is gangster. Taking care of your children, picking them up from school, Dropping my daughter off at the hair salon, nail salon, letting her girlfriends come over on the weekends and sit up. They can order all the movies they want, eat ice cream, go to Ruth Chris, ice skating. That's gangster. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Taking care of your children and watching them actually grow and being there as much as you can. That's what I realized is gangster. And being rich and taking care of your family and paying bills and making sure that the people who you paying bills to or the real estate agent or the Benz dealer, they respect you because you a good man, you a man of your word, and you pay your bills and you take care of your family. That's gangster. This nigga preaching. <laughs> what you talking about? Yeah, no, yeah, for nah, real. That's and gangster. that's, I think, for me, what was the, the misconception of the hood, right? Mm-hmm. The hood gave me a lot of good gems. I just was young enough. I was so young that I didn't know how to d- differentiate how to maneuver with these gems. For example, not being a bitch, right? Right. Not being a bitch ain't. If a nigga call me out my name, I got to smack that nigga. Yeah. Not being a bitch is being able to walk away. Not being a bitch is taking care of my family. Absolutely. Right? That's that's being a stand-up man. Putting yourself in a position to be there. Yeah. You sometimes you just got to, sometimes your family just needs you to be there. They don't need you to cover this bill or come out the pocket, uh, take care of the uh, check at the restaurant. Sometimes they just need you to be there. Sometimes your presence is priceless alone. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And um, Back to that being a bitch shit, it's like, Never let no man disrespect you. Never sure. let nobody walk all over you. But at the same time, know that you know what? You calling me a bitch because you trying to provoke me into doing something to you. You know what I'm saying? And like, if you kill me, 
whatever. You get away with it, or if you go to prison, you nothing, you nobody, you gonna wind up hushing or robbing or being on drugs in prison. But if I kill you, I lose everything. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and my family suffers a tremendous loss. So you know what? I got to walk away from you. I can't even put myself in that position because what I mean to my family, I'm, I'm, I mean a hundred times more to my family than you do to yours. Mm. And I know why you hate me. I know why you want to do something to me because you can't stand this shit, man. You can't stand this shit. This shit really come out the mud, the concrete. If I'm from the, I'm from Northeast, the Pentacles, 1513 Benning Road, apartment F13, Benning Road, Northeast, Washington, D.C., zip code 2002. When you Google that and you look at that, what's it called, the Google Maps? Yeah. When you look at that shit and then you see this, I know why they want to stop this because this was never supposed to happen. It feels so good hearing it, bro. <laughs> Absolutely. Because niggas don't get it. Mm-hmm. But, like, seeing a nigga that clearly been in this, like, we know what the fuck going on is. Oh, we can Google it. Absolutely. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Hearing that come from a, a man that, that been through the mud and trenches, like, bro, like, that shit ain't all, it ain't cracked up. It it's ain't not. All cracked up it's they, not, they, man. They say it is. You it's, know? It's the streets is a facade. You know what I'm saying? Smoking and, um, mirrors. You got a couple smoking mirrors. You got a couple niggas and bitches in the hood who keep it solid and and, and dead for you in 100. But for the most part, man, you only, it's, it, what have you done for me lately? That's what I feel like I get from a lot of motherfuckers from around my ways, man. Look, I know you just came home with me. I'm fucked up. Let me hold something, nigga. You right back at it. You right back to getting money. Shit, I've been gone four years, nigga. You still ain't found out how to get money? We in our 30s, bro. How many more pounds I got to give you? How many bricks I got to give you from before? You just realized that you can't sell bricks or you can't sell pounds. Just find something else to do, man. No just problem. find something else to do and take care of your family, bro. Yo, staying in this conversation, right? Question. Being in the industry, understanding that niggas don't move the way you move, but niggas still doing fuck shit. How hard is it to really swallow your pride and walk away? We hear about it. We hear we should do it, but how hard is that? How are you able to do that shit? Um, it used to be hard, bro. It used to be hard, and um, you know, you keep a, a hard exterior. And sometimes I might act like you know, damn, he did some bitch ass shit. But you know what? Fuck it, it's cool. Sometimes the do eat at me. You know what I'm saying? When I'm home and I'm in my man cave and I'm going through, I'm rewinding my playback, playback, it, it, it's, it's hard to swallow your pride, but at the same time, it's very, very necessary. Mm -hmm. So whatever you got to do to get to that point where you could swallow your pride and keep it pushing and move on, you know what, dog? No love lost, bro. You feel me? I don't know why you gave me your number anyway. You knew you wasn't going to answer. You should have just kept it gangster. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, it is what it is. But it is very hard to swallow your pride, though. But it's something you got to, you got to, you got to interpret that or you got to put that in, into your arsenal. Mm. Uh, tucking your pride away and, and, and keeping it pushing forward and keep your chin up and head held high, you got to interpret that into your arsenal. It's a must. But it, that's not easy, right? Like you said, it's hard. So you got to yeah. have like a, almost like a, a strong circle behind you, a yeah. strong woman, so like family to be able to talk. Absolutely, yeah, right. a, a, a strong situation, period. You know what I'm saying? All the way down from wifey to the manager to the kids to the babysitter to the lawyers to my back doctor. Everybody got to be strong, and we, we all got to work as a, as a team. Mm. But nothing that's worth it is easy. So tucking your pride is worth it. It's not going to be easy, right. but you need that. You need to be able to do that. So mm. nothing that's worth it is easy. Yeah. That's hard, bro. This shit is hard. <laughs> right, he, pre he preaching like y'all niggas feel this. I'm looking at y'all niggas like y'all niggas feel this. Yo, you um, you see you get mad love. Uh, you, every time you get out, Ross throw you up. Yeah. Um, what what's going? Is it still MMG? Like how is that? Um, contractually, no, I'm not with MMG no more. I'm I'm with Asylum now. Okay, out of New um, York. Um, yeah, New York. LA, yeah. Okay. Asylum, okay. Um, yeah. Dallas, Dallas okay. time. Everybody know Dallas, okay. man. Um. Yeah, I'm with Asylum now, but Ross, that's my big homie. I still got keys to one of Ross's house. And, um, you know, he got a lot of houses, but I still got keys to one of them in Florida. That's my nigga, man. It's all love. And anything that Ross need done, I'm doing it. And anything that I need done, Ross will knock it out for me. He gave me my first big check. He like the uncle I never had. That's my big homie. I always refer to him as my big homie, the bigger homie. Mm -hmm. I love him. I got nothing bad to say about him. You know what I'm saying? No, facts. How, wait, how much was your, big, your first big check? <laughs> Say the niggas in the hood want to know, nigga. Hey, I um, you know, I found out that I was worth more, but you know, I'd never be mad at Ross for two reasons: one, he a businessman, mm -hmm. and two, he asked me what I wanted, and when I said it, he gave it to me. Now, I didn't, I didn't at that time, I didn't know I was worth more, mm -hmm. but what I asked for, he gave it to me. You know what I'm yeah, saying? So, 
I asked, man, I was 21, 22. I asked him for 600,000. He gave it to me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I should have asked. I should have started at a mill. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? All the other labels was offering me, what? What was it? 300,000 at that time. Nobody was going over 300,000 at that time. You know what I'm saying? So he was like, how much you want? And I was like, fuck it. Let me just shoot my shot. I was like, should I take six? He was like, six what? I'm like... Six million. <laughs> I should have said it, bro. I should have said it, bro. I was like 20, 21 at the time. I was like, man, 600. He was like, deal. <laughs> he shook my hand. I was like, shit. Damn. I just made. I should have asked for seven. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, damn, I just made 600,000 with a handshake. You know what I'm saying? But um, I see my nigga, man. He gave me my first big check. He was the first reason I could officially really call myself rich. And um, I love him for that. And, and and the things that he taught me and all the memories that we share is prices you can't put a, a number on it. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So, shout Yo, out to Yo, just finish it, though. That six, on some business shit, was that like a, you know how labels, they give you the money, but you got to give it back? Off? Yeah. um, Man, you know, I can't get too deep into it, but Ross kept it gangster, man. Like, one thing at the time, I thought that Ross was going to be making a lot of the decisions, you right. know, pressing the buttons. But really, at that time, Ross was real heavy in his career, too. So, Ross was more so the face of MMG, and, and Atlantic was the people who was pushing Back buttons. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so Ross was like, "Look, man, you know, we ain't, you you signed for a couple of albums, for my nigga, take your time. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't be in no rush. Do what you gotta do. Basically, like, man, you know, get that money, nigga. Like, don't rush. You right. know what I'm saying? I can't I can't say what he was really saying." But he was just like, basically, man, do you. You know what I'm saying? And so, but shit, I was new to the game, man. After after I got the check, taxes, paying the entertainment lawyer, my manager, and the accountant. <laughs> what you bring home? that. <laughs> shit, probably like 375. Yo, this episode is sponsored by The Morning Meetup. Man, shout out to my guy, David Shines, man. He's probably one of the few people I know who actually built multiple multi-million dollar businesses, right? He created the Morning Meetup to help other entrepreneurs do the same thing. Now listen, as an entrepreneur myself, I know how hard it can get, especially when we start making money and we get to like this financial cap that we can't get past. And honestly, let's be real. They say it ain't what you know, it's who you know. We probably can't get past this cap because we either, one, outgrew the people around us, or two, we just being lazy and weighing in the rooms we need to be in. It's just plain and simple. But trust me, this is your time because the Morning Meetup is that room we got to be in. It's filled with, filled with entrepreneurs getting to it. They reading different books every month, right? They holding each other accountable. And it's just honestly just something dope to be a part of. So listen, if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to get to this bag, you're trying to flourish more than you've been flourishing now, you got to go to the morningmeetup.com. That's www.themorningmeetup.com and join now. Let's get to it. I'll see you there. You know that ain't too bad. That ain't too bad. Because after taxes, you would think it'd take like... Yeah, but you know... I was like 21, bro, so I never had that much money. Like, before that, the most money I ever accumulated to myself had to be like 30000 Let me keep it on it. Mm. From off the streets, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So, I was blessed with that. I was thankful, very, mm. extremely thankful for that. You know what I'm saying? So, it is what it is. It went a long way. Yo, you was coming up in almost like the prom era of MMG. Like, yeah. right, we got Meek, Wale, mm -hmm. he bringing, like, everybody on. Right. In that moment, did you feel what Ross was doing? Did I feel what he was doing? Did you feel the energy that was behind MMG? Did you feel that y'all were that big? Absolutely, I did. I did, but, like, I didn't feel how big. I just knew he was big, but I didn't feel how big because, like, when you in it, when you around Meek and Wale, like, we just regular niggas, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Meek love rapping, Wale love fashion. You know what I'm saying, and 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 and, and Ross loved women and, and and fine fabrics, motor vehicles. You know what I'm saying. It was just like these my niggas and like we just vibing. But like to the when we step out, it was like oh shit, it's MMG, it's Ross, it's me. Nah, nah. Like fans going crazy. We doing shows, wilding out, 106 and pop, um, shows all around the world. But like to us, like once we still went back in the house, we still turned on Sports Center, nigga, and it was. Talking about the game, like yeah. it, it, you know, it was just, man, you know. It, I gotta ask is. you this, bro. Being from back home, bro. One, do you think Wale get the respect he deserves from in your area? Because again, Baltimore and DC is so different. But do you think he get the respect he deserves? Um, no, I don't. And why not? Um, 
you know, DC, man, like if you really know about DC, DC is a, a, a dangerous place, bro. Mm. Like, sure. always have been, always will be. It's a kill or be killed city. And just Wale didn't represent that, you know what mm. I'm saying? Wale is, is from the PG Maryland side, you know what I'm saying? So like, but he never portrayed himself to be a gangster or a killer or a robber, a hustler, none of that. He was just a fly nigga, I like kicks, I like the bitches, like I love the bitches, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, the city really don't embrace his views a lot, you know what I'm saying? But each year he gradually get more and more and more and more and more respect, but like from the streets and the trenches, like Wale like for the bitches, you know what I'm saying? Now it is some mature men in the trenches who love Wale and who love his vision and for real, for real, people don't know. Wale a real nigga, you know what I'm saying? He not no fake nigga, like he will fight you. You know what I'm saying? Like he will fight no matter how big or small you is. But he not no killer and he not a bully, you know what I'm saying? So he don't come off as like, nigga, man, shut the fuck up, I slap the shit out you. You know what I'm saying? He not that type of nigga, but he will not take any form of disrespect in no way, shape, or form. You know what I'm saying? So, no, nah, it's crazy because like every time I interview somebody from back home, like I'll get different previews. I get some people say like talking to a light show, he like, man, Wale did so much for the city. And then you hear other niggas saying, like, that nigga don't put nobody on. I'm like, bro, I've, I've seen him show love to niggas. Man, people, some people are just ignorant, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. A motherfucker will be off camera saying, yeah, no, nah, I remember when Wale put that nigga on. Oh, yeah, damn, Wale brung such and such out. That was some cool shit. And then get on camera and be like, man, fuck Wale. That nigga ain't never did nothing for the city. Niggas is weird like that, bro. Yeah. Wale has done so much for the District of Columbia, Maryland, and Virginia. Mm. I don't even know where to begin. You know what I'm saying? And so, shout out Wale. That's my brother, man. Wale was writing me on JPay in prison. Like, he's just a real nigga, man. Great heart. Huge heart. Come from a good family. You know what I'm saying? He very heavy in the sports and fashion. Mm. Real nigga. I love him to death. Yo, you went to the, um, the Meek shit. Fresh out. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was everybody in that motherfucker. Absolutely. It was a star-studded motherfucking event. Bro, was you surprised at the niggas who knew who you was? Nah, nah. I wasn't surprised. It was just like... I wasn't surprised that they knew who I was. I was more surprised that they was like willing to like. I'm standing outside the dressing room. They like, um, yo, Fat Trail out here. Yeah, let, let them through. I was surprised like that the artist was willing to. Like I said, that they having like, man, yeah, tell Tricell what's up. Like, man, nigga, he just always in trouble. Dope right. artist, real nigga, but he always in trouble. And it wasn't like that. Yeah. A, a lot of nigga, the baby was like, nah, tell him come through. Money back. Where you at? Tell that nigga come in. You know what I'm saying? Rowdy Revel and them. Nah, tell that nigga come back. Fivey. Fivey like, nigga, I was just on your page. Nigga, I love it. Nigga, let's get it. Let's go. Let's let's go. Let's turn this shit up. Damn. You know what I'm saying? That was what surprised me was that a lot of people ain't give up on me. You know, mm -hmm. it's a lot of people who gave up on me, but it's a lot of motherfuckers who like, nigga, let's go. Mm -hmm. What you need? Let's get it. Let's let's do it. You uh you try to get any features from that situation or absolutely it's a lot it's a lot of shit in the works man it's a lot of shit in the works tell me man. something dog come it's on it's a man. lot of shit in the works you know I'm the young nigga coming up so <laughs> tell me something fuck it like fuck these it's niggas a, it's, it's, it's a lot of shit in the works bro like I don't, don't want to speak on it too soon because like the element of surprise it is definitely spoiled the element of surprise okay. but everybody that I brush shoulders with we, 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 we in the works of getting something done you know what I'm saying shout out to Baby Fivey Meek um, Rowdy Shit, who else, man? Um, oh, that's saying enough right there. Yeah, 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 man. Like, uh, he said, hey, buy a breast shoulders with something in the works. Shout yeah. out to all of them. A Boogie was there. Like, it was just all love, man. It it, it, it was just beautiful. My nigga, Icewear Vezo, man. Mm -hmm. Real nigga. Shout out to Vezo. We got some shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, we got some hard shit. My nigga, Boogie, man, CMG. ESTG, that's my nigga. We got some Heavy. shit coming. Man, we, 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 I'm, I'm coming full force, bro. Heavy. Are you fucking with the music scene now? Like, where is that compared to like where was that when you was, I guess, in the prime of things? I love it. I love where music is at right now. Um, that New York drill shit, that shit hard. I love it. I love that the that that that, that the ladies in the rap game is holding it down. Oh, you know the Cardis, the Lottos, um, um, Megan. Um, I, I I love I love where music is right now. It's at a beautiful place and um. I just want to add to the art, man. You know, I just want to represent the District of Columbia to the fullest. To Yo, the fullest. how you feeling about that, though? Like, the back home sound of D.C., like, do you think more of the world is getting hip to it or they still ain't see half of it yet? Um, man, you know what? D.C. is really slept on, man. Like, we, don't, we really don't get the credit that we deserve, and a lot of these people really steal from us heavily, 
heavily on the thievery of DC. Man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> to the dances, to the fashion, to the flows, to the um everything. You know what I'm saying? But I love where DC music is at right now. And um shout out to all the artists from the city, man. DC Murder in Virginia. We always been talented. And I just can't wait for us to get on that official platform like Cali, like Atlanta, like New York, like Texas. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I can't wait till we get to that, but but we gonna get there. What I you believe. think the, the hold up is though? Like what you think? If you could point point pinpoint it, what's holding y'all back for like a better word? Like a lot of people don't know that Washington D.C. is not a state. Mm. It's 50 states in the United States of America. Washington D.C. is not a state. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We're the capital of the United States. D.C. is very very small. You know what I'm saying? Like. <laughs> D.C. is like one borough in New York. You know what I'm saying? It's very, very small. And we beefing heavily, mm. heavily. The murder rate and, and, and the crime in D.C. is heavy. And that's what's holding us back because we don't have enough manpower to sit everybody down at a big-ass table and say, look, this shit got to stop. We got the talent. It's right there in our hand. Let's go get that shit. You know what I'm saying? Once we could be able to do that, and, and I said, been a lot of blood been shed, and I get that, but m nothing's more important than money, man, and mm -hmm. taking care of your family, and prospering, and striving, mm -hmm. and that's what we need. We need to be able to put the bullshit aside, and link up, and get this money, and everybody share fans, everybody share these concerts, everybody share the love, and share the sugar, and, yeah, you, and we could win. It's crazy, because we hear, we hear that, but can we, do you think that's possible, though, for real, like, for it not to be no beef and niggas just come together as one, bro. Any, I believe that anything is possible. Mm. So yes, I believe that if 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 a, if if enough good niggas come and we put our mind to it and say, look, man, let's cut this bullshit aside, let's get this paper. I believe it's possible. It's gonna be extremely hard yeah. because I mean, you gotta be from D.C. to know what's really really going on in the city. But it could be done. It it could be done. It just we just need enough motherfuckers and a big enough table to sit down there and say, look, man. We got to let it go. Let's go get some paper. It's just crazy because, like, I was, <laughs> it's random, but um, I feel like we've been t having the same conversation for years, bro, for mm -hmm. decades. Like, I was watching South Central the other day, and remember when, I don't know if you've seen South Central, right, when uh, Bobby, OG Bobby Johnson got locked up, the mm -hmm. Muslim came to him, he like, man, basically you got to put that, that dumb shit to the side. Absolutely. We've been having this conversation for so long. Yeah. Like, niggas fighting over the block, niggas killing them, cause the, and then a the nigga came up. Now he, he ain't looking out for his people. The same bullshit been happening. Yeah. So I'm just like, man, do we embrace this shit at this point? Or do we continue to try to get everybody? Because it's like, everybody ain't going to be the, on, on the same side for real. Well, you always got to try. Facts. You always got to try. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm, I, I, I can't settle for less. I can't embrace the fact that we not coming together and really getting this paper and, and really clicking up and, and, and showing the world what, DC can do. I mm -hmm. can't embrace that. I always got to strive for the best. I'm always in my phone texting niggas like, man, I appreciate you for being real. Like, let's get this money. Like, what's up, man? I'm coming to fuck with you. I just want to come to your video shoot, bro. Pop out, show love. If I get in the camera, show my face, that's cool. But if not, I just want to support you. And I'm, I'm, I'm real heavy on that because I've been sitting back in prison and reading magazines and watching these videos and watching these interviews and like, what Atlanta is doing, how all these artists in the A can really pull up on each other and make music, tapes, albums, shoot videos. It, it could be done. You know what I'm saying? I think um, part of it is we get away from small cities because I was talking about this about Baltimore. I feel like we, us being so talented can be like a detriment. And what yeah. I mean by that is we don't have one particular sound. Right. You feel me? Like, I feel like it's so many Atlanta rappers that sound similar mm -hmm. that it's easy for, okay, I like that. I can get him or I can get him. Mm -hmm. Whereas, though, like in smaller cities, it's like you got a nigga that's going to sound like this, sound like that, and they all sound good, yeah. but we can't really pinpoint it to one particular sound, if that yeah. makes sense. But if if we could come together and put the work, like I could bring my sound to the studio and you could bring your sound to the studio. And if we work hard at it, we could make it mesh. Facts. Or we could fuck around and create a whole new sound. Facts. It could be done. Right. We just got to be willing to put the work in. A lot of motherfuckers ain't willing to put the work in. All right, so look, we're going to have a little fun, right? I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a call it charge it to his brain, not his heart. So we're okay. going to just set the stage, right? Charge it to his brain, not his heart. Because we ain't no, no, no weirdo shit. Who is the hottest, the next hottest young nigga coming out of D.C.? 
Charge it to your brain, not your heart. So that means you can make a mistake or whatever. You can miss miss talk if you make it, whatever. The next hottest nigga that's the next coming out of DC. Nigga. It gotta be one. Can it be like a few, a couple? Give me three. Give you three. Um, young niggas, like that's crazy. Young niggas, I say Kai, the little nigga NSC Kai from the South Side. He hard. Um, Baby J Mo. From 37, that nigga hard, bro. I heard about him. This shit hard, like, for real. And, um, shit. Glock Jones. Mm. Glock Jones from Uptown. That nigga hard. Baby j and Glock Jones locked up right now, but they shit hard, bro. Like, they, if they can stay home and stay consistent with the music and, and, and grow, like, elevate as far as sound and, and work ethic, they can make it big. Do you reach out to the, like, you said they locked up, so... Clearly, their story is a little similar to you. Mm -hmm. When you see things like that and you hear, when you hear shit like that, do you reach out to the young niggas like, yo, come on, man? Absolutely. Mm. Um, when I was just home last year, I had Glock Jones pull up on my block. Mm. And, and, um, and I was just giving them game, you know what I'm saying, about the industry, what to expect, and, 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 and you know, what, what's, what's a no-go and what's a good move. Um, I talked to Babe. When I was locked up, we did a three-way. And I was on the phone with a good man that was over the jail, and Baby Jamo was on the unit with him. He called Baby Jamo over to the phone, and I hollered at him too. Like, look, nigga, when you come home, bro, we already know what you mean to the streets. We know, you know, your name ain't nothing to be fucked with. You from a well-known hood that's 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 known for putting in work. Put that shit to the side, my nigga, and let's get this money. Work hard on 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 being an artist and taking care of your family, getting your family out the hood. I reach out to all them niggas. Like, I got I got relationships with all them young niggas, bro. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yo, charge it to his brain, not his heart, right? Mm -hmm. Top five artists out of DC. Top five. Um, top five. Yeah. Uh, damn. Top five. I say me. Shy Glizzy. Mm -hmm. Um. Wale. Okay. Um. Two more, man. That was easy right there. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Come on, yeah, man. I should have well, told you without y'all. Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> um, shit, man. No Savage. Um, that crazy. That nigga Baller. That nigga Baller could wrap his ass off, bro. Mm. Tiny, very talented. And um, Baby J-Mo. Okay, that's not bad. And Glock Jones, man. And Slime Goon from Uptown. It's a, I know you said top five, yeah, but man, it's a, it's a lot of niggas, man. Like, nah, man, bro, we, we coming. It's a new nigga named Commons from 58th. He hard, bro. Mm. That nigga hard. He like that. Dope as a motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? You had the uh, Slutty Boys. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. You still you like you still got that? Because I see MGE. Mm -hmm. what, what's... Nah, um, you know, we, we some shit. Went down with the Slutty Boys and like they ventured off and doing their own thing and right now I'm just focused on, on myself and my career and um you know I helped my little brother Scruddy I helped him start the MGE imprint mm. and um you know what I'm saying that's what we developing right now we got Jizzle, Kai, rest in peace 23 racks man 23 racks was under the MGE umbrella we got Z Wayne too you know what I'm saying and um. That's what we on right now, and my my little my little brother phones man. He coming he coming up with some hard shit now. We getting him back into the fold of the music shit right now. But you know the Slutty Boys man, they a situation happened where a couple of them had to fall back and just they just doing their own thing. You know what I'm saying? Yo, does that does that hurt? Like, is it some sort of like survivor's remorse? The fact that like you kind of gotta separate yourself from the niggas you came up with almost. Yeah, it does hurt. You know what I'm saying? Um, we from the sandbox. You know what I'm saying? 20 years plus in this shit. So, 30 years plus in this shit. So, it do hurt. And, um, you know, the law works in mysterious ways, man. Everything happened for a reason. And, um, you know, I wish them niggas nothing but the best. You know what I'm saying? There's no love lost. And um, I still talk to one of them slutty boys, like, faithfully, Michi. You know what I'm saying? I still, I still talk to them faithfully. But um, it does hurt. Um, there's a couple of songs that I'm I, I got dropping re lately that 
I say in the song, like, I love them niggas from around my way, even though they left me hurt. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, It's just an unfortunate situation, but, you know, it is what it is. So, wait. You didn't leave. Like, how did, what you mean? They left you hurt? Um, Just some decisions that was, some decisions that they made. You know what I'm saying? I don't have nothing to do with rap or nothing like that. It was just like. Street shit. Yeah, it was just, yeah, it can't really. Okay, now it's. It's for the streets. Like, it ain't no industry shit. You know what I'm saying? Damn. Yeah. That's, it's funny because I wasn't even talking about, I was just talking about niggas not being able to grow with you, right? Mm -hmm. The, 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 the mentality you have right now wasn't the same mentality you had five years ago. Right now it's not. But the crazy thing is, a lot of niggas you was hanging with probably still got that same mentality. Yeah. So even besides the niggas that probably did you wrong or whatever like that, even if a nigga don't do you wrong, the fact that a nigga ain't growing mm-hmm. and mentally growing up and mature, you still got to separate yourself because they can fuck up the whole, whole situation. situation. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 a it's a it's a must that 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 you know when to cut it off. Mm. And um you but know, how are you able to? Because that's love. That's real love, and they ain't yeah. fuck you over. Right, right, right. How nah. do you do that? Like I said, man, it hurt. It's not easy. You know mm. what I'm saying? But like, um, life goes on, and I'm pretty sure that deep down inside, like, they got love for me too. They support me too. They don't want to see me lose because they know I came up from nothing. We all came from. We from the same hood. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I don't never want to see them broke or down and out or dead, locked up forever. I don't want them see them do that but you know we just had to go our separate ways damn man uh you you was just in the studio with uh bug boogie, boogie. yeah shout out my nigga boogie man How the, bitch on big dude yeah. <laughs> that's my nigga wait but he, i feel like his songs just started going crazy how like where, where did that connection come from you been knew him i been knew boogie um before before the music or no no not before the music just like maybe two years ago two three years ago i was in the cell i had a phone when i was locked up and um that's that rich nigga shit come yeah, on man, man. I fuck you. Right, man my my prison my prison my lockup history is ridiculous i tell niggas some man if i tell you how i was living in prison niggas don't it's some shit on youtube it's it's some shit it's some shit on YouTube and me like in my cell pouring up lean and shit. Now, let's like, get to hold up. <laughs> give me this story about Boogie. We yeah. gonna go to the we gonna get a jail I, story. Um, so like you know I spent a lot of time in the cell and I'm just on my phone and I was going through my DMs and that nigga Boogie had DM me and he was like, "Yo, I can't wait till you come home, bro. I've been listening to you since I was this age and bro, you hard, bro. Check my shit out." And I was just checking his shit out and I was like, "Oh, this nigga dope." You know what I'm saying? And like, I'm looking at his shows. He's selling out crowds everywhere in the South. And his music, I love his music. I love his energy. Like, yeah, I love everything yeah. about him. Like, a real young lit nigga. You know what I'm saying? From the South. And he was just showing me, he was just telling me how much he fucked with me. And I was like, damn, man, I appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? And he was like, yeah, man, I would love to work with you when you come home. And I was like, excuse me. I was like, say no more, my nigga. Like, we could do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm looking at your videos and your music. Like, I love that shit. I fuck with that shit. Like, nah, let's get some shit together. You know what I'm saying? And, and for some weird reason, I got a lot of women fans. You know what I'm saying? And like, <laughs> for some reason, like, I'm ugly as a motherfucker. But um, Boogie got a lot of women fans too. And and we 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 just talking, just conversing, and we knew that. And so. Like, he was sending me records when I was locked up. Like, yo, listen to this. Like, tell me what you think. And um, he was like, man, send me some of your unreleased shit, too. So I'm just sending We sending each other music back and forth. And, you know, we might be on FaceTime. He might add a couple bras in. I might add a couple bras in. We on, like, six, seven-way FaceTime. We just talking, Wait, just vibing. You adding bras in from the jail? Yeah, I had an iPhone. Oh, you adding them in? Yeah. I'm the... thinking, like, you putting them, like, what the fuck? Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, no, no. I'm just, um, we on FaceTime just, you know, just vibing and shit, you know. I had a couple COs and nurses on padlock, but. Wait, what you had? You had the. Nah, that was before. That was oh, before. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That was before. Let, um, you got to yeah, 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 nah. talking before. You know, wife, nah, wifey, man, I, I, I known wifey since I was 15. Mm. She was 16 when we first met. You know what I'm saying? And, um. We had been on and off and on and off our whole life. You know okay. what I'm saying? But the last time that we stopped talking, we went like seven years without speaking. Mm-hmm. Like, by the time we got back on speaking terms, she had had a five, her son was like four or five years old. Like, that's how long it has been since since we had started back talking. And we got back together. Um, We got back together after my little brother got killed. Rest in peace, Booster the Shooter, man. That's my shooter for life. 
we got back together after um, he got killed. But like I said, that shit that we was doing, like that was before wife. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Ever since I got in a relationship with wife, it's been in a no nonsense. You got paint the picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you nah, nah, nah. <laughs> but she know though. She know. Like okay. that, you know, I'm an open book too. So you know. yo, that that's crazy. Was you using your influence and the power that you had behind the walls to make you more money? Cause Absolutely. you can do that. Absolutely. I'm Absolutely. charging niggas for FaceTime for <laughs> I, man, I got hoes, man. I'm Absolutely. Char- Absolutely, man. Nah, we was definitely um some million way. I say I I said in one of my songs with I am North East. Oh damn, I forgot to say I am North East, bro. When you asked me about that. Yeah, I am North East. But um, I say hustling in prison ain't shit and I did it six ways. Like I definitely use my face card to get uh, you know, my mother used to tell me you use what you got to get to Give me three hustles you was doing. Need to go. Um well one I can't say. Um, but you mean, no, you say you had six, so you could give me three. I know, but you know, the main one I can't say, All right, you know what I'm it. saying? But two, uh, I was, um, what the fuck was I doing, man? You want to charge for the FaceTime? I, I was not charge niggas to talk to girls. Um, oh, what you mean, like to use my phone? Not a, if you had, if you, you said you was bringing girls in, right? When you was talking to Boogie, yeah, 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 I, nah. I'm getting some freaks. Like, listen, all you gotta do is show a little. I'm a charging nigga. For yeah, that. nah, I was hooking. I was hooking up a lot of niggas with bitches. You know what I'm saying? Because niggas, niggas need like in jail. You need bank accounts. So I was hooking niggas up. Like I give a nigga a bitch. Like, look, go ahead, get shorty. And once she bag him, I'm talking to her. Like, yeah, look, all that shit that he coming in, he selling K2 weed, cigarettes. Yeah, I need ten percent of that. You know what I'm saying? So I was definitely on that's that. That's a hustle. Yeah, that's that's a hustle. And, um. Shit, man, for real, for real, we was hustling in sports, like basketball. That was my one of my biggest hustles. Yeah. Cause you know, niggas look at me like, man, nigga, rap, man, like <laughs> Trail's a rapper. I bet, nigga, <laughs> <laughs> three on three, hundred a man, nigga. Don't worry about my team. I got my team, nigga. Hundred a man. I spot you four points, man. We going to sixteen. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nice like that. Come on, bro. This shit get critical. Ain't like that. This shit get unchy on that basketball court. Nigga. I had a million ways to make a million dollars, nigga. You play rap, ball- was, rap was just my favorite. Mm-hmm. That's hard. Hey, I ain't hate that nigga. I mm-hmm. lost. I think I hate it. Nah, nigga definitely could hoop though. Wait, man. I heard niggas be um, they be doing a sports betting too though. Yeah, they be doing. Yeah, they, they, yeah, niggas um, niggas make parlays and shit like. If you got some money, you could you could run the um you could run the gambling joint, but I wasn't really into that shit. You know what I'm saying? Was like, you was you going back because you liked it, nigga, or you was just nah, really absolutely fucking not, up? absolutely not. I just made some poor decisions. At no point <laughs> was some I some niggas back. go to jail so much you think they like this. Yeah, shit. <laughs> exactly. But I ain't gonna lie, like once you in prison, like being in jail or being in prison, like I could see. Pay attention to what I'm about to say. I can see why a lot of niggas had no problems with going to prison. Mm. Because a lot of niggas don't know how to deal with real life situations. Paying bills, car notes, uh, condos, houses. Some niggas don't know how to be a grown man. Versus in prison, I can hustle. I can fuck bitches and, 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 and get some money. And I don't got to worry about the real life actual situation. Mm. Some niggas don't want to take care of their kids. Some niggas don't want to pay bills and take care of their mother and their father. Some niggas just don't want to do that. Some niggas don't want to grow up. Some niggas don't want to grow, bro. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So living in there, it, it, <laughs> my wife used to always tell me, man, it's like a party in that bitch. Like, it was. Like, it's 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 sneaky lit. It get lonely sometimes, but like it's sneaky lit out the feds. You know what I'm saying? So like it ain't bar- it's it's always something to do out the feds. You feel me? So nah, but I wasn't going back because I liked it. It was just like it was, was un- fucking, yeah, yeah, nah, it was unfortunate. I would hope not, nigga. Yeah, it was unfortunate decisions, man. Yo, I think Wallow said one time he was like, bro, the hardest day for an inmate is the day he he getting out because he's been behind bars so so much. He don't. He know that when he come out, he gotta face yeah. the real world. Um, that's a that's a that's a good analogy. I would I would I would disagree. Like I would say, the hardest day is um visit visitation day. Like when your peoples leave and knowing that you can't go with them. You know what I'm saying? I mean, bro, the day that I was getting out, that was by far the hardest day in prison, bro. That was the happiest day in motherfucking <laughs> prison history. You know what I'm saying? So I, I can't relate to, you know, but everybody's situation different. I'm not saying they eat wrong. I would just say my opinion would be different. If you ask him what was the hardest day, and he'll say the day I'm about to get out, I would say, oh, that wasn't my hardest day. Mm. My hardest day was visitation days, you know what I'm mm. saying? Or just, you know, my daughter graduating, you know what I'm saying? Or my son, soccer game, you know. 
Those was hard days for me, not being able to be there. Being on the phone with my wife and she at the football game and she like, go, go, think, think you better fuck him up. And I can't see it. That was hard for me. Mm-mm-mm. Coaching from on the phone. Why you on the sideline laughing and playing, man? Get ready. Strap your chin strap up. Get ready. Hit him. Fuck him up. I heard you cry today. What's up with that? That was what was hard for me, trying to coach through the phone, trying to be a father through the phone. That was what was hard for me. Man. Do you still think about those those days that you miss or that's kind of just behind you? Yeah, I do think about them, but, you know, life goes on. I don't dwell on the past, but I do, like, you know, when I'm looking back at the footage of the graduation and shit, I, I'm kicking myself in the ass for not being there. But, you know, my daughter forgiving me and my son forgiving me, like, it's okay, Dad, and we know that. You do everything in your power. To, man, I do everything in my power to take care of my kids. My kids can't ask me for for anything on the world, and they can't get it. I absolutely work my hardest to make sure that my children get everything that they want and need. Mm. So the older they get, they understand. You know what I'm saying, Daddy? My daughter tell me that. You know, I she in a temp, so she like, man, I hear students who, like, hate on you or say little slick shit like, damn, Trail Icy as shit, man. I want to bag his ass. You know, bag in DC, bag him mean Rob. So she had a point where she know, like, I know you had to keep that gun on you, Dad. And I done been shot. You know what I'm saying? Like, so my daughter, like, she like, man, I forgive you. Cause mm. I know you just doing what you gotta do to live. It's easy to it's easy to give up on on your children, man. And I would never do that. You know what I'm saying? So even back when I was real hushing and heavy, my daughter Whatever she asked for, she got. So that's my mean. That's my everyday means. Take care of my children. Make sure that they get everything they deserve. I want to slow down on this part though, because you know we when we think of emotional, we think of like or or hurt. We think of like the bad things. When your son and your daughter say they forgive you, right, and they mm-hmm. really don't hold it to mm-hmm. you, how did that make you feel? It make me feel like the greatest dad in the world because I'm 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 able to. Show them I'm I'm so much of an open book. I'm not a closed off parent, so I get them the game so much that it's like, man, I love you, Dad. Like I know you're doing your best, mm. even in prison. The bills, look, man. When I went to prison, the bills don't stop. Mm. Uh, my, the real the realtor company ain't like, oh man, we heard you got three years. We gonna um cut the mortgage off for three. Nah, Bill still got to get paid. Mm. Daughter want Balenciaga. My son want to go to Disney World. My aunt need my help. She need a new car. The transmission and went out in the truck. Everything life goes on, bro. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I still got to pay bills. Like I still got to get money. So they for, they forgave me because I never gave up. You know mm. what I'm saying? I never. There, there was no excuses. It was never. Nah, you can't get that right now. I'm sorry, Daddy. Daddy can't get that right now. Nah, everything you need, back, go get that. Let's go get it done. Yeah, I couldn't even imagine, like, being in jail, still having to be the breadwinner for the family. Absolutely. Like, like, bro, I'm down. Like, I'm hurt. Like, nigga, somebody help me. <laughs> like, Help nigga. Like, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> but does that ever... Honestly, though, I know we could joke about it, but, like, does the... Being the breadwinner, the head of the household, always having everything be on you, right? Does that ever weigh heavy on you at all? Absolutely. Sometimes I let it show, sometimes I don't. But yeah, it weighs heavy on me. But, you know, it's a big responsibility to whom much is given, much is required. Mm. Or something like that. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, <laughs> whatever the quote said. But, um, <laughs> I fuck with this nigga. <laughs> nah, like, it's like, this is what you work for. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you laying down and you making them babies and... This this is what you do it for, so mm-hmm. it, it ain't no excuses. Shout out my nigga YG Tech, man, cause he screamed no excuses, no excuses. every day, all you know day, the vibes? and it, and it's and it's literally no excuses, bro. It's 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 never no excuses. You feel me? You know like, the vibes. So that responsibility, I love that responsibility because that's my biggest ultimate test as mm-hmm. a man. It's an everyday test. Can you get this done? Can these bills be paid? Can uh, your daughter go on a shopping trip to Miami, take her friends to Orlando. Can it be done? And getting it done, paying that bill, making sure that everybody all right, um, bathing suits, um, hotels, pizza, whatever the fuck they want, you know what I'm saying? Making sure that it could be done, that's the biggest testament of all time. That is, bro. But what about the times when it hurt, though? What about the times when you might can't do it, but you figure it out? Right? Yeah. What about those times? 
Um, it's hard, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, Talk to me. Like, we made it, man. Like, like nah, nah, real, real shit. shit. Like, you know, not being able to get something done or, you know, it weighs heavy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I look back on the parent that my mom was and, you know, a lot of the things we asked for, she just flat out couldn't get it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Not unless you rob a bank or, you know what I'm saying? We ain't have all the Jordans, man. We ain't have... All the new, fresh, brand new clothes when we when I when I was a child. So you know, that shit was hard. But you know, the hard times don't last, man. Only tough people do. Mm, that's a fact. Absolutely, hard times don't last. Tough people do. When the last time, when the last time you shed a thug nigga tear, man? When the last time you cried? Um, I believe when um our artist Lil Twenty Three Racks when Lil Twenty Three Racks died. Mm. Um. And um, you know what? I shared it a tip when Trouble died too. Damn. Shout out Trouble, man. DT, man. A Town, you know what's up. Um, that was the last time I shared it a tip, man, because you know we lost some real good stand up niggas. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And um, it was unfortunate. You know, death is never easy. So I think that's the last time I shared a tip was just losing them. You know what I'm saying? Like. It just, it just, it, it was a different type of pain not being able to be there at the funeral, not being able to support the family. <clears throat> that was the last time I, I, I shared it a tear. That's the situation is definitely unfortunate, but um, it's kind of relieving to hear you say that because you know niggas being from the hood, niggas is desensitized, so we hear about deaths every day. Right, right. So for you to for that to really hurt. It shows how much they meant to you. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Like, I value my my friendships and my relationships. I value them. You know what I'm saying? And, and 23 was was like a little brother. You feel me? Like, young nigga. One of the hottest coming out of D.C. One of the hottest artists coming out of D.C. I'm talking about bar for bar, song for song, swag, video, demeanor, mean what he say, say what he mean, everything. You know what I'm saying? And, like, we had deals on the table. A lot of opportunities for him while they was bringing him out at all the shows, um, and you know for him to get taken at such a young age, you know it just it hit different. You know what I'm saying? Cause that's like the little brother, like the nephew. Mm -hmm. You feel me? But you know, life. Do you ever catch yourself like, even if it doesn't, even if the tears don't come down, so frustrated that you want to cry about like, just. The the frustration of not being where you want to be, I guess, like, at the top, that top nigga, like, having it all figured out, do you? Or is, like, you really, you, you good at that? Nah, um, I don't really get too much frustrated at that because I know God got a plan. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And um, what's meant for me will be. You feel me? So I don't really too stress too much stress about what I don't have. You know, I like to think about what I can control and the plans shit. that that we got going moving forward as a team and as a unit and as a family. I focus on that real heavy. You know what I'm saying? And um, you know, I always want to be at a bigger level. I always want to make more money per show, per walkthrough, per verse, per whatever. You know what I'm saying? So we always striving for greatness, but. Frustration ain't what really come to me. It's just like a challenge, like, and I gotta mm. tackle it. Like, Ooh. this gotta be done in order for us to be here. This is these are the three steps or four, or how many other steps it take to get to there. So I focus on the process. I appreciate and respect the process of prosperation. Mm. Yeah. What's the goal? What's the, the 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 goal of it all? You think? Rich forever. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Rich forever, and um. You know, I want to I wanna act, you know what I'm saying? Like, I want to get into movies and... um. What the fuck role you going to play, bro? Man. What, what role you going to play, nigga? I want to play, you know what's crazy, bro? I always wanted to play, like, in a football movie. Like, any given Sunday, I would have loved to have been the quarterback in any given Sunday. You know what I'm saying? Like, Varsity Blues, a lot of people don't know this. Varsity Blues is one of my all-time favorite movies. You mm. know what I'm saying? Like, I love football movies because I'm a big football fan. But um, I would love to, like... You know, I would have loved to have been Ace or Mitch and paid him for. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, that's that's just that's just something I just strive for. Like, I watched the BMF show, and you know, I know Lil Meech. That's my homie. Shout out Lil Meech. Like, I want to be a part of something like that. You mm. know what I'm saying? I just want to put my acting skills on display, and 
I just want to be big, man, you know? I feel like that's a cheat code, though. That's not acting, for real. Because you came from the trenches. Mm-hmm. Now, was you, now, if it came to you playing some little nerd going to school every day, could you do that? That's acting. Yeah, yeah, I could do that. Like, if I put my, bro, I believe I could do anything. I could put my acting. mind to it. Yeah, and, like, <laughs> don't get me wrong, my acting roles don't have to be gangsters, trapper, killer, the robber of the hood. Like, I could be the dad who, you know, trying to, you know, I could be the, oh, the boxer, shit. yeah, the boxer trainer. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I just want to put my skills to the test, bro. It don't have to be a gangster role, gangster mm. killer, shoot 'em up, drug dealing role, kidnapper role, extortionist role. It don't have to be that. Like, I, like I said, challenges. Me being a nerd, like that'll be a great challenge. You know what I'm saying? A book smart kid that don't want to get into the fights or the. To ain't chasing the bad bitches or chasing the strippers like that'd be a challenge for me. I love challenges. You know what I'm saying? What's the first lines that come to your mind if you gotta play that role? It's it's your, it's your debut right here. It's your acting debut. It's you you the I'm gonna paint the picture. All right, you the nerd. You coming from school? These bullies. It's the the the, the, the these bullies keep fucking with you, right? Mm-hmm. But you can't get in a fight or you gonna get punished and you can't go to Six Flags. Right. So what would be my line? Yeah, you just make some shit up. Um That's hard, bro. <laughs> like uh shit, just man, like Let's go. you know, just tell no, right my... now, go on, go on. Action. Man. These clowns keep fucking with me, man. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't no fucking nerd, uh, nigga. <laughs> oh, that wasn't a nerd? <laughs> Nah, these clowns keep, fucking, keep with fucking with me, man. Like, no fucking nerd, nigga. man, I'm trying to pass my SAT, man. These niggas, man. These I'm niggas, thinking man. you gonna say, Bobby, <laughs> you gotta leave me alone, man. Nah, oh, nah, you nah, gotta nah. leave me alone. It gotta be authentic too, though. You know what I'm saying? I can't. I want to go to Six Flags, man. Yeah, man. What the fuck, y'all fucking up my mood, nigga? I'm trying to get in the wave pool. <laughs> fuck is wrong, with y'all, nigga. <laughs> Yo, speaking of actors, Will Smith. Or Denzel Washington. Ooh, that's very, very tough, bro. Is it though? Is it tough? I used uh, to think it was tough. I'm gonna go with Will, man. Fuck no! I'm gonna go with Will, bro. You just wanna go viral. Nah, bro. I'm gonna go with Will, bro. You you would have chose Bro, did you see Will Smith in the pursuit of happiness, man? Oh, nigga? that shit was amazing. That's like my nigga. I cried, Me bro. Too. When they was in the bathroom? When yes, the sun? bro. I cried, bro. Like, I cried, bro. Nah. I cried too with John Q. That was a good one. You know what I'm saying? I think the only other one I cried on was, uh, what was it? The baseball movie. Um, with uh, Lil G-Baby. Hardball. Hardball. Oh, when, when G-Baby got shot? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I cried too, but <laughs> Denzel or Will wasn't in Hardball. Like. No, I was just saying, like, oh, other, yeah, other yeah, movies yeah. that I was yeah. thinking that I cried. Yeah. But, no, you're right, you're right. So you would choose Will Smith? I mean, Damn. Denzel, would, but but the pursuit, of, like, pursuit of happiness, I just don't know. I just can't think of a movie as to where Denzel touched, no homo, you know, touched me yeah. that deep with his acting. You know what I'm saying? Like, Will playing in that movie, man, and just not giving up in it, that never say die attitude, bro. And like, man, like just chasing his dream to the for fullest. You feel me? And like, sure. it was real sad. Like, you know, he was going to his neighbor and he was like, man, I need that $12, man. Like, I need it, bro. Yeah. Like, please, man, I need that money, bro. You owe me $12, bro. I need that, bro. Like, I'm so serious. I really need that money. And it's $12. Yeah, and, and, and he was pressing him for it. Like, I think I need that, bro. I'm not taking no for answer, bro. You owe me that money. Let me get that. Like, to be down, to be at that point in your life, mm. it was just like, he, he fucked me up with that one. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. Will really fucked me up with that one. No, I think he definitely the most versatile out of the two. Because all, all Denzel Washington movies are like that alpha male. He's the same character for the most part. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. It's, I'm just saying, like, it's some roles that Will did that, I don't know if Denzel could have done it better. That's all I'm saying. Not you know what I'm I'm saying? With, I'm like, but Denzel, I respect the hell out of Denzel, bro, acting wise. You know what I'm saying? I love Denzel, but like when I compare them two, I just gotta give it's just my opinion. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Cool. I just feel like Will is like in the pursuit of happiness, bro. I just looked at him different. Like But they so good that I I'm not I'm not really mad at either pick though. 
Yeah. They, they, they like that. Yeah. I ain't mad at that. Yo, what you think the, the biggest misconception of Fat Trail is? You know... A lot of people think like I'm like mean and rude, like an asshole. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause you give off gangster though. You give like big, <laughs> like no nonsense. Yeah, like, yeah, like you give off like I ain't but think we gonna have this conversation. Like every woman I ever dealt with who knew me, like from music wise, like you know what I'm saying? Like women who not from my hood or from my city who know me before rap, they always say. Wow, like you like a big teddy bear, like you got a good heart, like you know what I'm saying? Like even to I treat my friends and like I treat their friends like, you know what I'm saying, you good, you need something, you need a plate, water, something to drink, what's up? You want me to cut the heat up? You good? I right, bet, look, um, you know, you could cut the TV on, you could watch this, this and that. And um we got this down the street, like I'm a real nigga and like my hospitality is 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 I gotta find hospitality. So a lot of people always tell me, like, women be like, yo, like, I didn't expect you to be this way. I thought you was an asshole. I thought you was going to just fuck me and curry me or, mm. you know what I'm saying? Like, I, you know, I'm I'm just. I'm a gentleman. Yeah, I'm a gentleman. <laughs> like, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a real, like I say, rich is gangster and taking care of your family is gangster. And, like, you don't have to be an asshole just because you're famous or that you got money. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't take my music career so serious as to a point where that I just treat people like shit because they beneath me. You don't make enough money. You don't make more money than me. Like, you beneath me. Like, I treat everybody the same. Mm. So my biggest misconception is that people think, like, I'm a rude-ass nigga. Wait, like, what, I'm an asshole. What's sign? I'm a cancer. You believe in that shit? Because yeah. I was about to say, it sound like you're a cancer. Yeah, I swear yeah. to God. Mm-hmm. Nigga, cancers be fucking sentimental and shit. Yeah, yeah. Nah, I care. Emotional and shit. I care. Okay. I do care. I care. Like, I care, like, I care about your craft, your profession. You know what I'm saying? I remember you was you was y'all like rushing, getting everything together. And you kept saying, my, "My bad, bro." Like I apologize. I was like, bro, take your time, my nigga. Mm-hmm. Like, I I I want to look good on camera, but this is your shit, and I want your shit to be 100 percent too. So take your time. Let's not rush. You know? I appreciate that. Even when I was like, bro, this just like you from you mm-hmm. like, nah, nigga, this our mm-hmm. shit. Like we going like, I'm this like, nah, shit. nah, this... that shit. I fuck with that, bro. Damn. Authentic, bro. Real nigga, man. That's probably why, but that's probably why you get so much love from everybody. Though. Yeah. Because niggas can feel that. Man. Yeah, yeah. And, and like, I'm relatable, bro. Like, I'm approachable. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like, it ain't, a motherfucker can't look at me and be like, oh, shit, that's Fat Trail. Like, should I, should I speak? Should I? Nah, man. What's up? Show love. What it do, my nigga? What's up? How you doing, sweetheart? You all right? Mm. Man, I like that dress. Them heels is fire. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm. that's just me. That's who I am. You know what I'm saying? Very, very humble. I feel like back in primetime MMG days, like, when you was coming up, they ain't really, the podcast wasn't really a thing, right? Like that, nah, nah, it wasn't podcast. I feel like this this podcast shit might open more doors for you because people can see your personality. Yeah, and I, um, and I hope it does. You know what I'm saying? I hope it does. Like, I've been gone for a long time. I'm, I'm really coming back for everything that I deserve. But at the same time, like, I'm approachable, man. Like, we can have a conversation about anything, any topic. I'm going to be fair. I'm going to give you my, my honest opinion. Mm. And um, if I can't speak on it, I'll let you know. But other than that, like, we can shoot the shit about whatever. You know, I'm a real nigga, man, from Northeast, man. Did you do a lot of interviews? Yeah. Um, a couple? I, I've, I've done a lot of interviews, bro. Mm. Like, you know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a people's person, you know. So conversation, I'm willing to talk. You know what I'm saying? I ain't really standoffish or like, man. I ever get this shit over with. Like, so I, I can ask you anything. That ain't, that ain't, yeah. Anything. Yeah. Yo, what this situation that's going on right now that we see with, uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, who? <laughs> I ain't gonna go there. I'm fucking with you. Um, he said, well, who? Nah, nah, yeah, I'm what he was gonna ask me. <laughs> Yo, when you, was, when you was behind the bars, what was your favorite thing to watch? You said you used to watch a lot of uh, interviews and shit. Yeah, but my favorite thing to watch is sports in mm. Like, hands down, like, nothing comes before. I got to be at the TV at 10 to see Stephen A. Smith, bro. Oh, I you got... fuck with Stephen A. Smith? <sighs> yes. It's a love-hate It's a love hate thing with Stephen A. Because I don't, sometimes he be throwing me off by shit he say about, like, the black community and, and, and shit like that. But, like, sports-wise, I respect his mind yeah, sports-wise. Yeah, he know his shit, for sure. Yeah, I respect his mind sports-wise. But when he get to talk about us, man, bro, like, come on, Yeah, so, yeah sometimes he be feeling like he don't got our back, man. You know what I'm saying? Stephen A., man, got to do better, bro. got to do better, dog. Yeah, I would <laughs> love to sit down with Stephen A., man, for real. What the fuck y'all going to talk about sports? 
we could talk about sports, but I also feel like that he don't have our back sometimes, oh, yeah, man. Yeah. Like, I feel like it's certain things. I understand it's certain things he can't say because he'll lose his job, and I get that. I don't want him to put his career at jeopardy, but at the same time, like, you could keep it more realer than you do. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got a voice, a huge platform, and he could keep it more realer than he do sometimes. You but I respect lot- him, though. Yo, but it's crazy because, like, having our back, that could be a conversation in itself, right? A lot of, one would say, that the rap community or the rap culture could be like a contradiction, right? Because if we're talking about having a black people black, standing up for black people and things like that, but in our music, we're making music that's talking about killing people. Right. Right? It could be a contradiction. How do you separate the, the art, right, from the, 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 the person? Um, you know, understanding that business is business, you know what I'm saying? And um, when you speak on real-life situations like beefing and, you know, Warren, that's a part of life. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. um, not getting along with certain motherfuckers is just a part of life. You know, so I don't really feel no, I don't really feel no way when I when I can say, man, Black Lives Matter. But man, I don't fuck with that nigga. Fuck that nigga. You don't fuck with me. I don't fuck with that nigga. Like, fuck him. I don't want to see nothing good about him happen. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, I don't really had no, I don't really had no in a feeling where like man you know you being fake you saying black lives matter but you dissing this man like i don't do this songs but if a nigga come out and diss me and, and and he trying to affect my livelihood and the way that i make money is most definitely fuck him so you let me ask you this then on some man time you, earlier you were saying how dc gotta come together right mm-hmm. let's say a nigga send you a diss do you still reach out extend the olive branch and be like listen man this is a bigger cause this is bigger than me and you we gotta come together. You diss me, but let's 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 put that to the side for for the big for the bigger cause. Do you um, do that, or could you do that? Yeah, I could do that. It could be done. You know what I'm saying? Because I know half of the time, motherfuckers diss to be heard, bro. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Some people just think that's a a way of a fast route to getting on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm gonna diss this nigga, man. I'm gonna put a hundred guns in my video and I'm gonna scream "fuck fat trail" and man, this shit gonna blow. You know what I'm saying? Like if I could reach out to the nigga and be like, look, bro. Don't use my name with what the fuck you trying to do because you know me and my niggas are serious, bro. You know what we on. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you from the city, you know. If it get too far, then I ain't wouldn't have had no conversation like about that shit. Fuck that shit. But what's if too it, far? If it's a, like, what's too far is constantly saying my name in records or acting like you willing to pull up on, on one of my niggas from around my way and trying to do something, that's, take, that's taking it too far. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, yeah. But anything out of that you could... Yeah, man, hands, like, but... like I know niggas make diss records to just, you know, niggas, man, niggas, niggas don't want to take the stairs no more, man. They, 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 they on elevator time hard, you feel me? So I'm going to take the stair type of nigga, you know what I'm saying? That's that Instagram shit, bro, I yeah. swear, bro. I say it ain't it ain't it ain't it ain't Instagram is instant gratification, bro. Yeah. That's that's that app. Mm-hmm. Nigga see nigga see Fetro, man, I want that. Niggas not knowing I got twelve years to get this Absolutely, shit. Absolutely, like, man. Niggas want yeah. this shit. Now we were just talking about that. Like, <laughs> I want this. Like nigga, I work hard to get this Absolutely. shit. Absolutely. Gotta go through the fucking steps. Yeah. Nah, man, but I fuck with it, man. I appreciate the conversation. I appreciate the time. Oh, no man, question, you, uh, man. You definitely opened the doors, and this is taking away from your money. Yeah. I appreciate it, dog. Nah, man. no problem, man. Like, yeah. it's all good. Like, this going to help me get more money, too. Like, Not you feel sure. me? So it's up one hand wash another, both hands wash the face. Ooh. You know, you never know who's going to watch this interview and say, you know what? Damn, man, I want to holler at this dude. Sponsors, you know, whoever reach out, so... Although, although you looking good with that motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, man. You appreciate me? you, man. You yeah, know, what I'm saying, I've been on North Face How, you know, from Northeast, man. You know, the North Face is real big in DC. Always have been, always will be. And I'm on North Face How. Like this is one of my favorite brands to wear. You speaking know what I'm of saying? that, speaking of brands. Yeah. You really you, you really gonna sit here, I'm gonna ask you this question. DC started uh the New Balance Wave? Absolutely. Play, stop playing. Absolutely, bro. You know Baltimore did that. Come on, bro. You can't find me no pictures from the '60s of niggas, old, uh, old head niggas, gangsters with new balances on. I can. We I'm... already had this discussion. Shout out to, <laughs> me- shout out to Meek. Shout out to Philly. Shout out to Jim Jones and shout out to New York. We've all been on the internet. Me, Meek, Jim, and um, and it was um, and and the homies from Baltimore. They was trying to figure out. We found all the pictures, all them old go-go bands, uh, Northeast Groovers, Raw Image, Chuck Brown and all them. We found the pictures of niggas in the 60s and 70s with new balances on, in the club, 
all the way to the 80s, 90s, and all the way up. Nobody could, no other state could go back that far, bro. Let's just give us our just due, man. DC, that's New Balance, that's DC, man. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to search this shit up, bro. Search it up, bro, please. Up, and bro. hit my phone. I got you. Yeah. Yo, I'm... missed opportunities, right? When you do interviews, what is some of the missed opportunities that you wish that you would have spoke on that you probably never get a chance to speak on? Um, Something that you want your audience to know that they, they might not know, you might not have got I probably about. ain't speak on um the justice reform enough. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I probably didn't speak on um how big of a trap probation or law enforcement is, period. You know mm. what I'm saying? I probably didn't speak on that enough. And um some You're people some me. some people would say that, oh, it's cliche, you did all that time and now you're willing to speak on how much I mean, African Americans or people of color, period, you know, Mexican, Spanish, get railroaded. Now that you did time, you willing to speak on it. Well, nah, I just I I, I was I was immature. And I always thought, well, you know, every time I got locked up, I really did the crime. So it ain't like I was ever locked up for on some innocent. But now, but looking back and knowing what I know and fighting the cases and sitting down with my lawyer and going through legal work and knowing that a lot of the ways that I had got indicted or prosecuted for something, they the fed, the feds went about it in a dirty way. You know what I'm saying? Like making up shit to, in order to search me and pull me over. I look back at it now and it's like it was never fair. We ne I never had a fair shot at all. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And like so, missed Even opportunity. The pro probation shit though, right? Like yeah. they put niggas on probation like me for years. It's like it's almost a trap. Yeah, it is a trap, bro. Because like, what's the odds of you? Like, bro, probation is so fucked up because. If you get shot while on probation or parole, that's a violation. That's fucked up. That's you know crazy. what I'm saying? Like, so they they might say, you know, you in pro you you on probation, you're not supposed to hang around areas where it's a heavy gun activity. Okay, well, a nigga sh in um in some state shot up the movie theater. You know what I'm saying? The boy in South Carolina shot up the church. So in DC, if you in church and you get shot, you will have to see the parole board for that. Wow. Will they violate you? You never know. But they definitely, oh, yeah, you got to come in. We need to see you about that. Oh, well, I was at church. Oh, okay. And they're going to have to really go over the facts and find out whether you was really at church. But let's say you on parole and let's say you were in a neighborhood, neighborhood where it's high crime. Let's say you went to a female's house at night. You went to a female's house at 12 in the morning that night and you left. You called your Uber at 10 in the morning. As soon as you walked out the building, a gunfight occurred mm -hmm. and you got shot and you was in a hot crime area you could be violated because you're not supposed to be around guns at all so being in a hot crime area you were never supposed to be you could be, that's unacceptable wow i've been locked up with so many niggas who was violated probation because they got shot wow that's unacceptable yo did when you was locked up you actually reached out to like Meet Kim. Yeah, Jay, yeah, yeah. Jay Z. Yeah. How was that? You talked to them. Like, how um, did that work? I didn't speak to them specifically. We spoke to people from their camp, and like, they, well, you know, me and Meek, we always spoke. You know what I'm saying? But like, I didn't. I ain't, I'm not gonna lie. So yeah, I spoke to Kim K. You know what I'm saying? Nah, we spoke to people in their camp. Um, they tried to do the best that they could. They reached out. Um, mm -hmm. they we 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 reached out to my judge with a big plan, uh, letting me out early. I could uh donate to this nonprofit. Uh, do community service hours, build a community garden, hold a sports tournament, all that. And, you know, my judge just wasn't with it. But we definitely reached out, like, you know, felt, you, you know, we, we we did the best that we could, you know mm. what I'm saying, in order to get me home. Yo, that uh, you think the biggest flaw is that, that probation shit, like if you get shot? It, do you think that's the biggest flaw or is, or is it something bigger than that? What's the biggest flaw in the, <clears throat> the ju judicial system? The biggest flaw is that you're really never innocent until proven guilty. You know mm. what I'm saying? It's just that's just a saying, bro. Like, it's man, trouble is 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 easy to get in. It is absolutely hard to get out of that shit, bro. Mm. I'm talking about they set up block, 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 block out of the block trying to keep you in prison, man. Like, and man, I had a white boy. His name was Cully, and. I had got caught, my, my Virginia charge, I had like a DUI in possession of marijuana. It was like three ounces in my car or some shit like that. And they fined me to the utmost. They gave me the maximum fine. You know what I'm saying? I'm just giving you an idea. Right. They gave me the maximum fine because 
I'm a black man. They gave me the maximum fine. When I had this dude, I was in cell 16, he was in 17, white boy named Cully. He got caught with like 40 pounds of marijuana, some guns, edibles, all type of shit. And his fine was like $1,000. Knowing that he came from the wealthy family who could pay Beta. whatever he with, paid no the maximum pro- with no problem. Right. They give white people the most lenient shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, just pay this $1,000 fine. And then they, they'll take somebody... Not knowing that I got the money to pay the shit, you know what I'm saying? But they like all like on my unit, all the black people, all the African Americans, their fines was the max. Wow. So I do serve your time. We want the the max that we could charge you for catching this crime in our dis- in our county. We want you to pay the max. All the white people had the least. It was just a clear, blatant sign of what's it called discrimination yeah, or something. Discrimination. You know, like it was. It's just ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? Like, wow. It was ridiculous, man. Damn. And, and it's crazy because, like, even, like you said, you're not, you're not really innocent until proven guilty. It's niggas that, that go to jail. Some shit happens. Somebody might recant the, uh, 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 a statement, statement. Or, I don't know, they find out that something was flawed. Yeah. And they let people out. They don't get niggas no money. for like that. Oh, yeah, no, nah, they're going to fight you. They're going to fight. They're going to fight not to pay you or nothing. Like, this shit is not built for us to win, bro. It's like prison was was really created for African Americans and Mexicans and Spanish people to like, to get us off the streets, you know what I'm saying? Like, w- of course, white people, there's a lot of white people locked up who commit crimes and all that, but like, it's not built for, like, they built prison, it's just a new slavery, like, mm. and I did, a, I did some time in a Virginia state prison. Being in that Virginia state prison, bro, showed me that incarceration is definitely the new slavery bro mm. it showed me like you have to work for these people man you got to work for these people like for pennies and you got to work extremely hard to get your sentence knocked down you know what i'm saying like that shit was just crazy so if bro. you don't work they what they you just do your regular time or yeah it was like a bunch of boy if you don't work like you just like Whatever, like you just gonna rock. You gonna do your time to the door, like the four eighty five percent of your sentence. Yo, when you go, is is jail as wild as people think? Because when I think of jail, like I just think like, man, if I get locked up, like even even being in jail, I just think of it as being like a not really fair. Because like you go there, nigga, try you, you gotta fight, or you won't get your ass whooped. And then you fight, you get in the cell. That's the first thing you get put in. I don't know, uh, isolation no, shit. Yeah, no. that's the, that's what I, that's how I think of it. Is yeah. it really that bad like that? Um, yeah. Depending on where you, I'd have been locked up at some spots where wasn't nothing going on. But at the same time, I'd have been locked up at some spots where if you ain't a man, you're not touching the phone. Um, If you ain't a man, when you order commissary, you will not receive your bag. If you ain't a man, when the trays come around, you will not eat your tray. Now, when you say when you ain't a man, is it like some gay shit or you just ain't built? Like, <laughs> when I say you ain't a man, I'm like, Lord, training ain't getting no, that shit. No, if you ain't a man, if you ain't a stand up man. Like, if you ain't willing to, if you ain't got no respect, like, mm. if you ain't a man, like, it's, it's, it's boys in jail and then it's men. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's youngins and then it's OGs. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. if you ain't a man, you getting your tray stamp. You know what I'm saying? When commissary come, yeah. But how are you, you showing it? Because, again, my first thought is, oh, I got to go around whooping niggas' ass to show them I ain't, I ain't nothing to be played with? Um... Nah, you just got to, like, it's going, it's, it's certain ways that people going to test you, bro. Mm. Like, when you come on the unit, and you knew, right? And you say, yo, um, somebody on that phone after you? Yeah, man, it's a line, man. Or, nah, I ain't getting on the phone. A nigga might tell you, nah, I ain't getting on the phone. Go ask one of them other niggas. So you went around to all five phones and asked who next, and everybody said, man, you're not getting on the phone. You're going to have to check somebody like, hey, look, I'm getting on one of these phones next. If anybody trying to see me about this, we can see you can see me right now. You we can cover my cell, like. But I'm getting on the phone now. You showing that you're a man mm. now. So it's gonna it might be somebody who gonna respect it. Like, all right, shorty, that's a bet. Yeah, you can use the phone after me. Or it's gonna be a nigga be like, yeah, man, all right, bet. Yeah, I'm trying to see you because you ain't seeing it. You ain't getting on this phone, so I'm trying to see you. If you go in there and see him, you might that might be the phone line you be on. Mm. Just because you show the nigga like, man, I'm willing to fight to get my respect like I'm a man. So he might add you into his phone line or another nigga might be like, hey, sure, I respect that. You in this line from here on out. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So you just got to show that you're a man. Mm. 
Yeah, I, ain't, I don't want to be like that, man. Yeah, <laughs> nah, jail, me, man. Bro. Jail and prison ain't no place for nobody to go, man. I don't, I don't wish that on nobody. Not even my worst enemy. I don't wish that on nobody. But a lot of things in movies is kind of exaggerated. But prison is prison. It, it, they is raping niggas. They is stabbing and killing niggas. They is hanging niggas and make it look like suicide. They is extorting niggas. They is extorting COs. Um, prison is prison. You know what I'm saying? You just gotta have up the mental toughness or the finesse to be able to move on a day-to-day basis. Damn, nah, man. Stay the fuck out of there, dog. Absolutely, man. Man, stay I'm home. I'm done. Get this motherfucking money. I got you. The richest gentleman. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I might make a mixtape called that, The Richest Gentleman. <laughs> you feel yeah. me? The richest gentleman on this mm-hmm. motherfucker. Niggas know. Niggas know what you, what you, what you about, bro. Absolutely. And yeah. you know that. Yeah. Yeah, man. Can we, uh, we want, I, I feel like everybody, when they hit see you, they see Ross, they think like, can we expect you and Ross to get on a, a track right now or? Absolutely, yeah. Mm. I got some shit coming. Like, yeah, I told you like, man, we got, we we, we putting together something big, bro. Top of 2023, we coming heavy. You know mm. what I'm saying? Shout out to Dallas, man. Shout out to Asylum, man. Like, we going crazy. Like, I wish I could tell you, but I've been informed to not say certain things during the interview to, to, to respect the element of surprise. And we got to make sure every all our ducks is in a row to paperwork. All that shit is we together, We got to put Squirrel out. We seen Squirrel. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah and, so. and I really wanted to, I'm, I'm mad he said it because I really want to know what the but fuck I was about to I didn't even see him do that, but yeah. it was, because I wasn't, it was, I was just fucking around. Yeah, I was saying I ain't scared to speak on nothing, man. Like, I don't even know why he did that. Nah, you know? nah, nah. Cause Me we, and him will have a conversation about that when the cameras go all right. Nah, what? you know, because some shit is just unnecessary. It wasn't, I wasn't going to, it's, it's unnecessary. Like, niggas mm-hmm. got to get this money, make this music first. Then you can ask all you can't answer all the questions right now. Yeah. Not right now. Absolutely. Niggas got some paper to get first. Absolutely. And then niggas can start answering. <laughs> I agree. I agree. No, nah, man. J-Hill, J-Hill Podcast. Great conversation, Fat Trail. Man, that's a wrap. We out. Appreciate Love, it, Love, brother.